the uh, motards with the uh, sidelining of James Clark after an all week in the last race coming from the motor. The motor and the gearbox are separate in these bikes. And uh, maybe a broke ring. Two, four, six, eight, ten bikes. So uh, a ten lap race there. And uh, of course what you can see out there, the reverse direction of part of the track. And uh, make it some battles last time down all the way through. We had the top five bikes all beating it up there. Uh, one bike down early on, the piece coming out of turn one and uh, the yellow flag out there for, I think, the remainder of the uh, race, but uh, expect some fireworks again. Uh, James Clark, one of the lead bikes, unfortunately, went out. Tony Herman went down. Uh, obviously, Tony's back up there. He's OK. He came up the front straight. Out of that Toyota corner and uh, binned it. And, uh, yeah. But he does score points because it went back a lap, so uh, that's the interesting thing. I believe Motorcycle New Zealand are going to change the uh, rules there so that if you are part of the crash, not the cause of the crash, uh, but the very, we have to be very clear on that. The cause of the crash, uh, how can you identify who caused the crash, especially uh, when you get someone that's crashing on a turn that's uh, that's off in the distance. One set of, you've got a judge at the track maybe, but they can't look at everyone at once. So trying to apportion blame to one particular person uh, is never going to be successful. It's never going to be a workable rule. Uh, the other problem with that is uh, if it was a yellow flag and you were out, you would not finish the race anyway, whether you caused the crash, whether you're a part of the crash, uh, whether you're on the ground, whether you're broken down on the side of the road. So I was at the MNZ conference in Queenstown a few weeks ago and um, they are looking at the FIM rule also about restarts, whether there is going to be points allocated for the first part of a race uh, or whether it's just going to be right, you're all allowed to restart and it's going to be points on the second part, the final part of the race. So back onto the track at the moment. And, uh, find that who's the quickest it was Mark Oliver in the last lap. And it still is Mark Oliver by uh, point one of the second. But Cut Scott from Longview leads it on the Kieran Honda. CR450 out in the front there, Oliver second place, Tony Hurley there in third place, and uh, Mike Kyle there in fourth place. I think Mike Kyle's from Wakatani. So Honda, 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 Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda, and uh, Yamaha out there. No, uh, no KTMs or foreign bikes like TMs or that out on the track at the moment. You can see the uh, Motards getting stronger and stronger, bigger fields there um, for the Victoria Motorcycle Club Bridgestone Winter Series. And uh, Kachi's gone and put it into the uh, low 39s with a 139.066. Uh, well, I didn't think really that uh, Mark Oliver was closing on him, but definitely Kachi has set the fastest lap of the race. Three, four bikes on the uh, in the 139, in fact, very little separating the uh, first three machines, 39066 to a 39198. Uh, that's for Cudge Scott on the 62 machine, Mark Oliver on the number five, and Tony Hurley on the 40 machine here in third place. We go back in the third, still in the 39s, Mike Kyle there. And in fact, Cudge is now into the 38s here, 38976, so just getting faster and faster. Looking further down the line, Dave Dennison. I haven't seen him on the racetrack. It's the same Dave Dennison from Wanganui. Uh, can't be too many Dennisons around in Wanganui, especially with the name Dave. Um, Dave Dennison uh, spent a lot of years classic racing a sidecar, a Norton sidecar with his brother, Ricky Dennison, one of the old open wheeler, the um, large wheel bikes. And uh, it's the first time off from my memory that I've seen him actually out there competing on a solo bike. And also got the Dave is some 316 bike, the uh, Honda. Um, he's also one of the directors of the uh, world famous cemetery circuit. So good to see him getting his uh, bit of breeze in his face as well. Touch getting slower, but still out in the lead. 39.3 in his fastest lap. That was a 39.6. 30, 30, 30, 39.3 last rap, 39.38.9. Does that make sense? 39.3 for his last lap, 38.9 for his quickest lap. So a little bit slower, but um, actually caught up to see the way he's looking over his shoulder and checking it out. But he can get slower and slower, and actually this is starting to play in the hands of uh, Mark Oliver, who's in behind him. He's 0.2 of a second quicker, and he is closing up on the track. 0.867 seconds of a gap, and 0.866 
of a gap between second and third, so just 1,000 difference between the gap there, although it looks like to me Kudge has opened it up there, or Mark Oliver has slowed down, because the split's not quite as much as they come on to the Toyota corner for lap eight of a 10-lap uh, race. Brought to you by Fastway Couriers of Wanganui. Big thanks to all the sponsors. <laughs> Talk to old man Clark. And he said, I think I'm going to have to stop sponsoring this class if the wall always breaks down in it. But uh, they've gone back to Wanganui to find out what the problem is with their bike. And not going to stick around there. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that uh, Graham Clark of Fastway Couriers is only joking about the sponsorship. And, and it's really good to see him put his uh, company's money behind the sport that we all love. Don't forget to mention it to him as well because uh, a lot of these guys and uh, companies don't get necessarily the recognition. There's a good battle coming out of the uh, slip row there. Um, right down the back of the pack. Can't quite figure out who those two bikes are. I think it's Dave Dennison and Pete Duxfield. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, white flag is ready to come out for a touch. There, I believe, bikes still spread out between first, second, and third. And Mark Oliver going through there in second place with her in there third place. Hermes just marginally slower in that last lap than Mark Oliver. So I don't expect to see much of a change there. There's some lappers coming ahead, but these guys won't get uh, amongst those lappers until they are, uh, well, it won't happen before the end of the race. So that's a well-timed race for them. So Cut Scott uh, coming onto the front straight on the 62 machine, the Q and Honda sponsored bike. And he is followed by Mark Oliver. Doesn't look over his shoulder at all. He knows where he is. And takes the chip Cut Scott also sponsored by Boss Engineering, Gorilla Graphics, and uh, who else we got? Mark Oliver there in second place. No sponsors listed. Tony Herney there. Uh, helped out by Gorilla Graphics, Q and Honda, and Motel Oils. Gorilla Graphics, I've seen him on about uh, six points. Personal friend of mine. But uh, right into his motorcycle racing, Marty Esau from Wanganui. And I've seen his uh, logos on about six different bikes at the cemetery.